Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brand Johnson for Used Boats TV. And today I'm gonna to take you for an on-water demonstration in an absolutely gorgeous Chaparral 274 Sinesta. So that way, if you have any interest in owning one or you own one now and are, are buying one and unsure how to operate it, you can refer to this video because we're gonna start from beginning to end and teach you everything about this model. Let's get started in 30 seconds. Now, once you have your beautiful Chaparral 274 Sinesta in the water, because it's got to be in the water to run, you come back underneath the engine compartment. Just lifts up. Right here to the starboard side, we have dual batteries with a switch. So the benefit of that is we can turn that switch to both. The alternator is going to charge both the batteries. Uh, while we're driving the boat. If we're going to stop, cove out, listen to the radio, switch it to one or two. That way our stereo and our lights and whatever else we got on booming out here with the family is isolated to a single standalone battery. Then if we go to start it and we get the old click, 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 we can just switch the other battery, day still on. When you're done for the day, shut it off. But we got it on both. To save time on this video, we're going to include a bunch of links in the description below, like how to operate, tilt, and trim. Uh, what to do when your boat won't start, how to dock boats and tie ropes. Just a bunch of information, if you're interested, is down there in the description. So, we know on this bad boy that our battery switch is on, the kill switch is plugged, boat's in neutral. From there, it's fuel-injected amazingness. Turn the key, she fires right up. So, shifting is extremely smooth. Right here underneath the handle, we just put our finger, it's got a trigger, it's got a definitive catch for forward, and it shifts extremely smooth. Back to neutral again, because we only have to lift up the button to engage in a gear. We got reverse, there's a definitive catch. What I mean by definitive catch is there's a stopping point, and our throttle range is beyond that. Don't ever go throttle from forward all the way to reverse. You will, you will tear something up, okay? Your tilt and trim for the out drive, your trim, that's right here. So I've had a lot of customers as they're excited to drop. So your, <laughs> gosh damn. So your tilt and trim is right here on the shifter. I've had a lot of customers that are excited to drive. As they accelerate, they trim up. So the trim is the out drive with the propellers on it. They're accelerating, accelerating, Wrong! boat's not going anywhere because the propellers came out of the water. So don't do that. You always want to start off trim down. Trim down, you have the props in the water at a negative angle keeps the rear end of the boat lifted and drives the nose down. Um, you know, doing water sports, maneuvering, that's the best way to keep it, just trim down. You know, when you're gonna cruise, you wanna trim up. Be sure to refer to the video that I've got down below in the description that explains how, you know, how to find your perfect cruise, how to operate, tilt, and trim. Now let's go to buttons and switches. On the helm, we got a blower. This just ventilates the engine compartment. You'll notice, I'll get some people out there that complain that I don't have the, the blower on at idle, which is what you should do, simply because this is fuel injected. You don't smell anything, especially in a video, you don't see smoke. Horns right here. Uh, the blower ventilates the engine compartment, you should leave it on at idle, there we go. Bilge pump's automatic, you'll probably never use it. That just throws out the water in the engine compartment, okay? Right here, water pressure. Most generally, no one ever uses them. That's for the water tank and the sink and what have you. Um, let's see, it's got a fuse in it, there's nothing in it. Uh, no water and the reason no one ever uses it because the water sits in that tank and smells like straight sewage When it's hot outside so in environments like you know where this boat's going It's gonna smell really bad navigation light That's the red and green built-in up front and the white light the plugs in the back That's for driving at night in the middle's off white light anchor light stopped at night courtesy lights are the interior lights on the inside See right up there replacement boat lights.com. They make those in LEDs that's that exact same housing. So you just replace the whole housing on those, not the bulbs. Docking lights are the headlights up front. I can't remember if it has that, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, depth finder doesn't come on on this one. 
Uh, there's no wiper, but there's a button for one. Okay. So now we got tilt steering, so we can set this wherever we want it. Looking at our gauges. Come here, Braden. We got our fuel gauge. We got our trim, speedo, tachometer, oil pressure, engine temp, and volts. Okay. Now that we know what our buttons and switches do, and we know that our gauges work, I'm going to take the camera from Braden here, and we're going to go for a ride. So our test power today is a 5.7 GI Volvo. Let's take a look at that 5.7 GI Volvo propelled by a dual prop outdrive. 5.7 OSI, that's a 320 horse, okay? So the OSI is just a closed cold option for the 350, okay? All righty, taking a look at here, dead stop. Let's put her to the test. So what we're gonna do for the mechanical test is uh, we're going to run at full speed, trim down. For everyone out there that's test driving a boat, you run at full speed, trim down. That puts the hardest load on it because you're keeping that nose buried down. That's when you know if the boat's going to hit, miss, spit, sputter, pop, backfire, or fall on its mm -hmm. face. Once we run it as hard as it can, trim down, then we'll trim up, see what our top speed is, and we'll find a comfortable cruise speed. It is windier than all heck. Hats on backwards, son. He's texting his mom. <laughs> All right, so she's got a lot of punch with a dual prop drive. With a dual prop drive, notice the nose just sets down nice and flat, and the boat really accelerates exceptionally well. So we're running 3,800 RPM at 35 mile an hour, talking like an auctioneer. Woo! -hoo! Trimmed all the way down, we're hitting 40. We got her pegged. Trim is down. Putting off a nice splash right back there. 42, let's go ahead and trim up. One, two, we're letting those propellers come up, giving the nose of the boat lift. See, now we're running 45 mile an hour. Trim her up some more, 47, 48. Into the wind, we're running almost 50. This is awesome. Keep in mind, you guys at home are seeing the GPS speedometer. I'm looking at the one on the boat. Oil pressure's good, engine tip's good, that's fuel trimmed about halfway. So she runs exceptionally strong. So the fact that we we're able to hit almost 50 in this uh, water conditions is pretty impressive for a boat this size. Remember, this thing's 28 and a half feet long. It's enormous. Uh, also, since the water's cold here, it's cold outside, uh, the water flowing through the engine, you know, the thermostat will never open up in this type of environment unless we run the boat for hours. So like when that opens up, we're going to get a little more speed even yet. Yeah, it'll just it'll just take off on its own if you're running it that hard. So now we know that uh, the boat runs good. It doesn't miss. You know, a 274 Chaparral Sinesto with a 350, definitely a great choice. Tons of room inside with the U-shaped seating in front and back. Tandem captain shares. Um, now we're going to go ahead and find our comfortable cruise speed. So for our comfortable cruise speed, we're going to start the boat trim down. Just we're going to accelerate it onto plane, which in this boat, there is no trick. You can go fast, you can go fast and hard, you can go slow and easy. Either way, it's nice. All we're trying to find at the cruise speed is at what RPM and trim angle does the boat feel comfortable? How do you know it feels comfortable? You can feel it in the wheel. You feel resistance in the floor. It's almost like the boat takes a sigh of relief when you get that cruise speed. Okay, really right here is pretty comfortable. 3,200 RPM, about 32 mile an hour. Uh, I want to slow down a little, because that's a little fast for me cruising. It's even easier, 3,000. Just trim it up, just a couple of clicks. Let's go down one. Yeah, right there. So the most economical cruise speed is going to be under 3,500 RPM. That's where we're going to have the best fuel burn. So right here at 3,000 RPM, just one click trimmed up which on the gauge, gauge is gonna read right there at 29 mile an hour. That's extremely smooth. Definitely feels great. You can do this all day and you're not burning a lot of gas because you're under 3,000, or right at 3,000 RPM, under 35. All right, well, I'm really impressed with it. We're gonna take her out of the water and check out the condition. Let's go, let's hold it. the turn. Let's see how sharp we can turn it. Hold on. In the wind. Oh, oh, oh.
one and a half foot long jet ski. Definitely handles. It didn't miss or skip. It's a good hole. A bad hole design will skip when you do that. It didn't skip at all. Let's go throw her back on the trailer. All right, let's take a hard look at the gel coat. So everything's nice and shiny, no scuffs, no scrapes, no scratches. Oh, one thing to always look for on these is the blower vent covers. See, it's not cracked. You know, this just weighs a few ounces. You can't pull thousands of pounds by a few ounces. It doesn't work that good. Rub rail's in great shape. Take a look at the stem. We custom fit this trailer. Everything looks great up here. A uh, common sign of a lift cap boat. You know, it's not been banged up onto the trailer. Dropping down whole side, port side, everything's pretty. Lifting strakes, reverse chine keel. Tip of the stem's great. We got a little bitty stress crack right here. Bump it into the dock. Keep in mind, that's not structural. That's just a little one in the gel coat. You're gonna find that more in a boat like this that has real thick gel coat that shines up so beautifully than in a cheaper boat. Cheaper gel coat or cheaper product. There's also no like funky swirls or nothing, which tells you there hasn't been like any repairs because you never fix gel coat perfectly. Um, this one's good too. Coming around to the swim platform. Seems like I saw, yeah, stress crack back here. Can I have a big one? You always just put a, a name over the back of that there. That's just from, you know, backing up. And again, that's just in the gel coat, not structural or nothing like that. Okay, drop it down, looking at the drive. So it's got the dual prop Volvo. We picked this up along the way. Uh, stainless props, all the blades and ears look great. Capitation, plates beautiful. Skeg's great, drive looks good. Let's jump inside and take a look at her. We're out here floating, checking out the condition. So this bad boy has the great big extended swim platform. Got some storage underneath this compartment. That needs, we didn't wash that out very good. Storage under that one, still dirty. Got trim right here. Uh, we got a place to tie up our rope. We got a transom shower if we ever use that. This backrest comes out and it gives way to great big wrap around seating. Like that. The vinyl's in super nice shape. You know, in a 274 Sinesta, uh, chaparrales of this era, they use such nice thick vinyl. You always want to look at the headrest because thick vinyl, if the boats weren't stored well, stored well will be uh, sun cooked on the top. And there is none, none, none of that on this one whatsoever. This would be a great boat to, uh, you know, switch out the cup holders of stainless. Super cheap thing to do. Really dresses it up. So it's got the captain's chairs with the flip up bolster. You got two cup holders down inside the gunnel. Got storage here. Now that is a lot bigger cooler than it looks because it takes up that entire seat base there. The ski storage on the floor is enormous. There's our night light. Got some extra stuff, some buoys, fire extinguishers right there, place to plug in a phone. We got another cooler here where the sink is little waste basket. And the fact that it's got all this stuff in it, I always say people, the waste baskets in here, people that take good care of their stuff, take good care of all the stuff. It's very rare that we get a boat that's not missing, you know, stuff like the ski storage compartment lid carpet, um, the uh, waste basket, you know, everything's in here. I want you to really look at these seats, how nice they are. See the nice vinyl shine, always used a lot of conditioner. Great big deep storage compartments. Let's see what's in this one. In here we have aft filler cushions and a table. So as aft filler cushions, there's gonna be some bars I'll show you in a second. They go back here and it fills all of this in, okay? Captain's chair, take a look at the helm. Uh, around these screw fittings, there's a little bit of like calcium buildup or something, the acrylic. You can always just take that off and uh, you know, sand it down, have it die knocked. You can do just about anything to make it cool. There. Inside the head, we have a flag stereo light window and this is a standard head so for the standard header snap on covers in here too basically there's two clips on the side of the toilet that you unclip one on both sides the top comes off you lift the bottom it's got a cap on the back you dump it you put it back in clip clip that snaps back down and you're all done all right keep going 
Second, this is the wind block door, shuts the block the wind. This is a yacht rated boat, so you can put as many people in it as you would like. Right here we got a storage compartment. I call that dry storage for chips and whatnot. Uh, if you're in a short dock, you can take this cushion out, walk through right there. That little door opens. This one, you got kids up here. You got a cooler underneath. Whoops, that's probably loud. Above the stem, there's our docking lights. Another little wash down. We have an anchor locker with an anchor in it and a bow boarding ladder. Let's see what we got under this seat. In this seat, we got a cover pole and a paddle. We don't need that. This baby runs good. More storage.
Good